Hi, my name is Layla Singleton and I am the lead instructor helming the graphic and digital design program here at In Focus Film School. I actually got started as a fine artist, so I've been drawing since I was just a few months old, and it was just a hobby. Started to get a little bit older, going into middle school and high school, and I realized that this hobby had become a very serious interest of mine. And so my intention was to become a painter. My whole portfolio for art school was all traditional fine art paintings and drawings. And then unexpectedly, in senior year of high school, I was on the newspaper staff. And we all had to design one page of the newspaper every time we put out an issue. And I really enjoyed the process. I just thought it was so cool, playing Tetris with words and images. And I started to realize, hmm, I think this is called graphic design and I think I like this. And so I decided probably first semester, senior year in high school, that I was going to pursue graphic design in art school. Went to the Savannah College of Art and Design in Savannah, Georgia, majored in graphic design, and the rest is history. I think the, the thing that I really enjoy about graphic design that I think is distinct from my fine art beginnings is that graphic design really uses both sides of your brain. So you have the opportunity to be a very creative person and scratch that artistic itch and that creative itch, but you're also working with software. So it's a technical experience. And additionally, you are integrating the requests of clients. And so there's a lot of problem solving involved, there's a lot of Tetris involved, and I think that that synthesis of right brain and left brain is really satisfying, especially for people who were kind of always interested in both. They liked their art classes, but they also liked their math and their science classes. I would say that the, the main thing that graphic design seeks to do is communicate. And that is another difference between graphic design and fine art. I always like to say that fine art is a diary entry, graphic design is a telegram. And so really as a fine artist, you're under no obligation to make sense to anybody. If you've ever had that experience of standing in an art gallery and seeing a piece that really its meaning is very op opaque, you're looking at it and you don't know what was going through the artist's head. That is a very fine art experience. As graphic designers, we are obligated to communicate. We communicate on behalf of our clients, or even when we're doing personal projects, we're communicating whatever message is important to us. That could be something like a cause that we believe in. Uh, so a lot of people would say sales is, you know, sales are the purpose of graphic design, but really to me, it's communication first and foremost. I think that when you are pursuing fine art or illustration, concept art, a lot of those are careers where it's really great to have your own distinct style. As a graphic designer, I like to say that we're almost the chameleons of the art world. We have to assume whatever skin our clients want us to assume. And that is challenging because Sometimes you have to let your own tendencies take a back seat and your own desires as an artist take a back seat. Uh, but it's part of what keeps it exciting and keeps it new. You can certainly develop your own style and there are designers who have become famous for having a particular style for sure. But I would say that when you're in a work environment, it's important to become that chameleon. Uh, be, be okay with shedding your own skin, your own personality, and assuming somebody else's costume for a little while. Yeah, I think that it's, it's really about immersing yourself 
in the story of your client. There was a, somebody, I, I wanna say from the Frost Design Agency in, in Australia, and they, they said the clue is in the brief. The brief is essentially this document that is handed over to you as a graphic designer when you undertake a new project. And the brief gives you all the background about the project in front of you, the target audience, a lot of times the strategy, and really the clue to who you're going to become for the, the duration of that project, it's always in the brief. And I, I love that, I always repeat that in my classes to my students, that clue is in the brief. I can't take credit for that one, but uh, it's such a brilliant and succinct statement about what it is that we do as designers and how how we can immerse ourselves in that that alternate character. You look at the brief, you study the brief, really understand what your client's communication problem is, and just through the process of solving that problem, you will figure out what colors best communicate your, your solution, and what typeface choices, and what overall aesthetic, what visual tone best suits your client. It's so hard to, to quantify something like that if you're a good designer. There are different metrics. I always tell my students that there are many metrics by which we can measure design. Uh, in my classroom, we of course have my grading rubric, which covers usually the technical aspects of design. So do you use color well? Do you use typography well? Do you understand composition? Do you know how to create texture in a piece? Do you understand the elements and the principles of art and design? That's a very academic approach to graphic design, and certainly it's not the only metric for measuring whether or not a design is good. A design could be very good in all formal aspects, but fail to inspire your viewer. And so in my classroom, we vote, I have the students vote on their favorite projects and give somebody who wins that popular vote a few points of extra credit as well, because that's an, a valid metric as well. How your design connects with people once it's left out in the wild, in the world, that's really crucial as well. And then of course the other metric would be, did it communicate to the audience? Did it give, now we're gonna get into marketing speak, but did it give a return on your investments? Did the client see the results that they wanted from whatever communication it is that you deployed into the world? Obviously there will be the, the basic artistic stuff. You know, you should have a good sense of color. You should have a good sense for composition. You just should have a, a good and sensitive eye. You should be able to tell the difference between Helvetica and Comic Sans, for example. <laughs> those, those are kind of obvious uh, things. I like to think about some of the value added skills though that make a graphic designer successful as well. I think that obviously being a good communicator, good verbal communicator can be very helpful. When you, not only when you're speaking to clients, if you go on a, a pitch to clients, you're trying to win uh, an advertising account or uh, you're trying to win some work from a client, you know, you, you wanna be able to communicate well with your clients. When they give you copy, which is just words, to put on whatever it is you're designing, brochure, etc. You, it is helpful to be able to read the words, understand the words, and try and capture those words in your design. And, you know, clients appreciate it too if you, you know, pick out a, a little typo here and there. Uh, so I think that communication is really crucial to have those skills. Uh, a little bit of writing can be helpful. That's a value-added skill. Understanding of photography, that, that's a really big one for us as designers because we frequently use photographs in our work. So you don't have to be a master photographer, but understanding basic things like exposure, uh, understanding you know, what makes a good photograph, rule of thirds, uh, just basic photographic knowledge can help you evaluate more effectively the photographs that you choose for your pieces.
So really, as a designer, anything that you can bring into the mix can be an asset.